So it turns out that uh, Elon Musk appears to be uh, leaving Twitter as Twitter CEO. Of course, he's still going to own the thing, but we'll get into that shortly. But I find uh, Elon Musk's takeover of Twitter has been quite interesting, but also uh, slightly confusing in some ways. But there have been some people who have done some good work looking into exactly the problem, and people who have got inside information, some of which we'll go through. Uh, because th there's this... There's this kind of Joker-esque way that Elon has taken over Twitter. Come in, caused absolute chaos, and now I'm kind of waiting for the, you know, everything's up in the air and I'm waiting for everything to land, particularly with the uh, unsuspending of people. I'm waiting for yeah. unsuspending of people. It's been five years, Elon. <laughs> it's, been, you, it's been six weeks. Yeah, you got suspended from Twitter as well. Do you know why? No, I never, no. I no. mean, I can guess why, right. but but they, they never they never tell you. No. You've broken their terms of service. Well, that could be anything. Yeah, yeah. I I did misgender yeah. someone once. Yeah. The Taliban never seem to break their terms of service. Yeah, it is weird. The terrorist groups. Yeah. yeah, the Iranian government. Yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. very strange. Anyway, before we begin, if you want to support us, uh, go over to lowseas.com and check out our new series, which is Comics Corner, uh, which is uh, Harry and Connor analysing... Uh, particular comic series they like and I think this is interesting because it seems to tie in it's you know the Joker that they're doing this week and I just felt it was thematically appropriate uh, but it, it's been getting a really good reception so they must be doing a good job comics aren't my thing particularly but everyone seems to really like it so great uh, anyway let's let's begin with some jokerish maneuvering by Elon Musk so hashtag rip Jimmy Fallon was trending on Twitter uh, according to one commentator, it's trending because Twitter allows fake news now. There are no adults it allows fake news now. As if up until this point there was no fake news on Twitter. Nothing about Russian collusion or, you know, nothing about the Hunter Biden laptop. You know, is is suppressing true things a form of fake news? I would suggest it's a lie by omission. What could, who who knows, right? But they, they carry on. There are no adults in the boardroom or moderators. Elon Musk fired them all. This is what Twitter looks like when anything goes and you can literally crash corporate stocks with a fake tweet. This is, of course, in reference... Uh, this is not what's being pre presented. It's just some other commentator's um, uh, thing. I should have got the link ready. Um, but uh, this, this, of course, is because uh, Elon Musk rolled out Twitter Blue's verif verification system and people are like, but I'm not actually being verified. I'm just paying for the check mark so yeah. I can put myself as anything and so uh this this caused this outrage and so jimmy fallon just tweeted at elon must be like elon can you fix this and he just responded with fix what it's like well what do you really want him to do you know am i am i supposed to no, you're not allowed to tweet this now am i supposed to hunt a biden hashtag rip jimmy fallon no it's and again this is hardly the first time fake news uh has been uh has been trending on Twitter. And of course he puts, you know, it sounds like a job for community notes, which is the new info budget. Basically the community can put uh, tags on things and say, look, this is fake news or this is the context, yeah. whatever, you know, I don't think it's a terrible idea to be honest. Uh, but anyway, so in light of all of this, Twitter blue had to be uh, postponed because as I said in my, how Elon Musk should moderate Twitter article, uh, actually he needs to verify <laughs> the people who are paying for verification. You have to know exactly who they are, uh, in order to make sure that they're not impersonating people, because, of course, this was a major problem. Uh, I actually suggested, look, just have it so they actually don't get to change their names, as in they actually have to have their names, and so you don't end up with uh, the problem that Count Dankula is in right now. And the, if you scroll up just to the woman above him as well, uh, so uh, someone called Rational Blonde was like, uh, I'm stuck as spicy chicken sandwich. Can I change it? And Elon's just like, well, with the new release, changing your verified name will cause a loss of checkmark until the name is confirmed by Twitter to meet the terms of service. Again, the easiest way to do this, if they're paying you, just use their credit card name, just mm. first and last name. Don't worry about the middle name. There you go, you're verified. You are who you claim to be. You don't get to change it. And you don't get stuck as giant penis brackets parody, says Count Tankula has found out, uh, which amusing, but, uh, you know, I think the fixed. issue for Elon here is when he came up with this, he had no concept how childish people can be. Yes, indeed. And how silly they can be. Which is kind of ironic, given how he loves his memes, he loves tomfoolery on the internet, and he's got such a large platform. He must understand that he's setting the tone of the, the platform 
going forward. Yeah. And the people who are angry that he's taken this over are just going to be as vengeful as they can be mm. following his lead. So he should have expected that, really, I think. Mm. Uh, kind of short-sighted. Um, but anyway, so it, it is still confirmed, though, that all of the legacy blue check marks will be removed in a few months. And, of course, the, uh, the new official tag has been reintroduced uh, because... <laughs> doesn't work does it um anyway who knows who knows what will uh, end up happening with that um but what i th thought was interesting is there's a chap called devin nash who is the founder of an ad agency and put out this hour-long video that only twenty thousand people saw and so i thought i'd kind of promote it a bit because this is very very informative because he claims to have direct knowledge of the inside situation at Twitter. Now, I can't confirm any of his claims, so I'm just going to present them as unconfirmed. But I think the most important thing that there was the takeaway from this, again, just look up what was really happening at Twitter, Devin Nash. It's an hour-long video, worth your time, because he's quite forensic with it, for it, to be honest. Mm. He goes through in, in, ab in absolute detail. Uh, but I thought the most important thing that we would learn from this is really Twitter's financial position that's the issue now twitter's uh finances have been released and i have looked at them i just didn't get them up for this because it wasn't very interesting it's a table of spreadsheets um but apparently twitter is 20 billion dollars in debt they get six billion revenue a year and they have six billion in cash just floating around and so you can see elon musk's problem uh they are and they are operating a loss of four million dollars a week a week yes so you can see Elon Musk's problem here, right? Mm. They are deeply in debt. They're losing money. And, I mean, they have, you know, six billion in cash to hand. That's very useful, I imagine. But that's not going to last forever when you're losing four million a week. You know, when you're losing like 16 million a month. This starts chewing into your finances. And then you've got to pay off uh, all of those people you've fired. If you fired half the company, like three and a half thousand people, we need to give them three months severance pay. And if mm. they're on an average of something like $140,000 a year, well, all of this really chews into that six billion liquid capital yeah. that you just happen to have around. So, not good. Uh, and so Elon has been pretty ruthless in uh, putting the platform onto what he hopes is going to be a profitable uh profitable path um he sent this memo out to twitter staff and obviously mm. got leaked uh and this is ruthless actually i'm quite impressed with how uh it's just unrepentant he is about no 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 you're all going and as he says here Going forward, to build a breakthrough Twitter 2.0 and succeed in an increasingly competitive world, we will need to be extremely hardcore. This will mean working long hours at high intensity. Only exceptional performance will constitute a passing grade. Twitter will also have to be much more engineer-driven. Design and product management will still be very important and report to me, but those writing great code will constitute the majority of our team and have the greatest sway. At its heart, Twitter is a software and service company, so I think this makes sense. If you are sure that you want to be part of the new Twitter, please click yes on the link below. Anyone who has not done so by 5pm tomorrow will receive three months severance. He's not messing about. He's not he? messing about, is he? He's, he's not conning in the unions. He's not saying, Let, let's have a team away day and let's work out how together we can take the company forward. He's saying, <laughs> you're in or you're out. This is it. Yeah. And the thing is, this was probably inevitable. There's been... Had to be. There's Yeah. I mean, Silicon Valley social media mm. companies, uh, I think only Facebook's the only one that's ever made a profit, actually. Mm. Um, but YouTube, Twitter, and uh, various others are just not profitable companies. And being propped up because of their usefulness frankly yeah um and facebook has just had a something like thirteen thousand layoffs mm. recently so that's about 12 percent of their entire company just mm. gone uh twitter's had half and you can see why these these things are massively overinflated and i've seen a lot of chatter about well this is affecting hr the most this is affecting the diversity departments the most oh no how tragic. Did you see the accusation that he's now trying to starve his staff? Oh, no. How <laughs> tragic. Because he's now stopped free food in Twitter offices, <laughs> which was costing 18 million a year. He's now cancelled that, and he's been accused now of trying to starve his staff into submission. These guys get <laughs> six-figure salaries. If, I, But that just speaks to the entire mindset that 
preoccupies San Francisco, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like, look, no, look, we are total dependence on you. You have to feed us. Yeah. Like in, in the Google offices, like you've got the apparently there's this expectation where you have to be at the company all day, and like you, you can get uh, beds and sleep in there and stuff like mm-hmm. this. It's like this is really unhealthy. Like this is weirdly kind of psychopathic, isn't it? It's like this complete corporate capture of the person. You never get to leave Google headquarters. That's crazy. Mm. You know, and it's the same sort of thing with the, the adult daycare that Twitter was. Like, why don't you just be here all day, every day? It's like, because that's really unhealthy and I'd like to have a life. I'd like to do well, something. We are your life. Exactly. That's exactly it. Um, and so, yes, now I'm in favor of Elon starving the Twitter staff in submission. Uh, you've you get six figure six figure salary. Go and buy yourself a burger. Honestly, <laughs> children, absolute children. So anyway, uh, yeah, Elon's uh, Elon's memo was pretty brutal, but it's also obvious that the man is serious about actually making Twitter a profitable company, which surely is not a bad idea. But of course, this led to brilliant takes like this one. Is Elon Musk intentionally trying to destroy Twitter with his Twitter 2.0 in- ultimatum to employees, or is he just an effing idiot? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the world's richest man is just an effing idiot, mate. Mm. I'm sure you've got it. I'm sure. Uh, and again... This was coming, whether you liked it or not. You know, the question is just how much debt was Twitter going to be able to rack up? Uh, you know, because all the all the money that Twitter was getting prior to this was apparently coming from banks, right? Uh, this is what um, Devin was talking about in his video. Uh, and so, is okay. Well, how many how many loans are the banks going to give you? And so it's like, look, you've got a super unprofitable company. Uh, we're not just we're just not going to give you a loan anymore. In fact, we're going to call in and we're going to take your assets and we're going to take over your company. Like, how long? Who knows, you know, but it couldn't have lasted forever. And so it hasn't. Uh, And so you've got uh, brilliant parody takes from The Onion. Elon Musk demands Twitter servers explain what all those wires are for. Elon Musk is an engineer. (laughs) Like, like these, these jokes, for some reason, don't land because that's not the problem with Elon Musk. The problem with Elon Musk is actually the lack of stability and calmness with which he has approached this. He's approached this rather like a bull in a china shop, which, don't get me wrong, as someone who's not on Twitter and is watching it remotely, is hilarious, but um, <laughs> it's definitely not the way I think it should have been approached. I think if your joke is based on Elon Musk isn't very intelligent, then it can't be funny because we all know he's, he's very intelligent. He's obviously a smart guy, yeah. There, there's lots of things you can accuse him of, you know, lots of things, di- being dictatorial. Being um, reckless. Being reckless. Uh, lots of things being you can accuse him of. But not that yeah. he's not intelligent. Yeah. Or that he doesn't know anything about tech. Yes. Like, he's a tech bro. Of course he knows about tech. Like, th- this is why the left can't mean. Anyway, so after everyone was calling him stupid, uh, to no real effect, um, it turned out that uh, it was suggested that Elon is probably going to be leaving Twitter fairly soon, which I was quite surprised about, but not terribly shocked about, if mm. that makes any sense. As in, I didn't think it'd be like so soon he'd be thinking about handing the company off. But I think I thought it was obvious that at some point he would be installing a new CEO. He'd maintain ownership of the company, obviously, after mm. making it profitable. And the new CEO to run it, you know, because he's got other things. He's got a lot of other things going on, I imagine. So, uh, I, you know, it wasn't terribly shocking that that would be the case. But I think it's surprising that it's so soon that he's talking about because everything is still wild and up in the air, right? I would imagine his thinking, is if I could know what he's thinking, but my thinking mm. would be Elon goes in, takes all the flack, mm-hmm. becomes the hated figure, mm-hmm. does or the nasty stuff straight away, steps back, someone else comes in, and they have the fresh start to help build the company Mm. and get advertisers back and stuff. But while Elon is still at the helm, Mm. all that is harder because he's the hated figure. Yeah, but but there's no doubt about the fact that a brutal reconfiguration of the company has to take place. Yes. You know, half the staff have to go. You know, anyone who's not 100% committed, you know, all the time has to go. You know, all of these extraneous drains on the finances of the company have to go. Mm. You know, and so like you said, that's a good point, actually. Very Machiavellian, actually. Mm. Very, you know, clever thinking. But uh, anyway, as as Business Insider tell us, uh, Elon Musk has apparently suggested a potential successor who could fill his role as CEO of Tesla. Oh, sorry. I thought it was... Sorry, I misread that. I thought it was Twitter, not Tesla. Balls. This is what happens when you're in a hurry in the morning. Uh, <laughs> but um, moving on then, because this, 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 I totally misread that. Yeah, I, I thought I, I yeah, I, I'm a, it looks like I pulled the wrong article. Yeah, 
John, John's saying that he saw it as well, so I must have just got the wrong article. Because it, the reason I brought this up is because Jack Dorsey had been asked this as well. If you go to the next one, uh, he'd uh, he'd been asked... Uh, if you just want to open this up, you can see the... There's nothing, not much to this, really. It was just that someone uh, yesterday had asked him, are you going to accept the position of CEO of Twitter? And so I guess I didn't read that previous article correctly. Um, but uh, he was asked by Twitter if he'd accept the position of CEO, and he replied, nope. So I believe, if, if you can try and find something very quickly, John, cover my embarrassment. John, pull that up. Um, I can't believe I made that bloody rookie mistake. You couldn't have Jack Dorsey back as CEO. Well, why not? Why do you, why do you not think so? Isn't he part of the problem how we got here in the first place? Kind of. Ah, here we go. Right, okay. Thank you, John. I appreciate you saving my ass there. <laughs> God, what an embarrassment. Cal uh, Benjamin is making things up now live on air. I, I, yeah, you know, I'm supposed to be a professional <laughs> in this. Uh, but anyway, as you see, he expects to find a new t uh, CEO over time. Uh, what, did he give a time span? No. No, he didn't give a time span. But uh, as it says, according to multiple media reports... He says, I expect to reduce my time at Twitter and find someone else to run Twitter over time. There we go. So he will at some point be leaving. I'm surprised that this, as I said, this news comes so soon. I would have thought, because it's only been like three weeks. Yeah. You know, I would have thought, I mean, it's going to show how quickly Musk moves on things, really. And he, to be fair, he's not been slow at all. Um, I would have thought this would have been at least after, you know, a couple of months. You know, Elon would have you know, let the ship right itself and sailed it for a while and then been like right okay someone else can take the helm but uh, but apparently not even a month in and he's like yeah so over time someone else is going to get it but yeah like i said it, jack dorsey isn't going to get it and but you were saying um he was part of the problem right I, I don't know that much about jack dorsey but my initial feeling would be here's the man who allowed twitter to turn into what twitter became um he may not have been on board with all that but he was mm. weak enough to let it happen mm. there's baggage with everybody taking former staff back into a company always has um negatives so for me and thinking he wants a fresh start and a mm. new way of doing things why would you want the old boss coming back who then tells you this isn't how we did things at twitter in my day well this isn't your day so i i would suggest that what happened with twitter is that uh, jack dorsey and co um created this interesting thing and it started getting popular and they needed to raise revenue and so what i think they did is you know got a lot of shareholders in and yeah. these shareholders often came from you know international investment conglomerates and jack dorsey essentially found himself in a position where he couldn't leverage any kind of executive power mm -hmm. uh, and so he would essentially be forced to go along with all of these things or else we'll stop giving you money and of course yeah. you've got a company that's not profitable and so the whole thing collapses and so i think I, I, I've I thought this for a while, actually, with a lot of the sort of like... Uh, same with uh, Zuckerberg. I think they're in a position where they can't really object to what's happening, even though they don't really agree with it. Because uh, I, I actually do think that Jack Dorsey uh, and Zuckerberg are not radical progressive lunatics. I think they've just kind of been co-opted by them. And so it was a lack of um, actual power. Oh, here we go. John's got another update as well. On Monday, Musk said in a tweet since deleted that he plans to sleep at Twitter's headquarters until the organization is fixed. Well, good, good luck with that, Elon. Um, but the, the point is, um, I don't think Jack Dorsey is actually a terrible uh, suggestion. I know, radical coming from me, this. Uh, because, A, he's explained his position on it. Like He's quite good friends with Elon, apparently. And he's explained that... Um, he should have had it as a decentralized sort of mastodon style server from the start and mm. should, should never have been able to be owned publicly. But now that it is owned by one man, uh, and if Jack Dorsey is then made CEO, then he's got complete executive control over it. So actually the problem of being sort of taken over in the way that happened actually shouldn't happen twice. Mm. And maybe Jack would be able to actually run the thing properly. Uh, maybe not. I think it all depends if you know Jack Dorsey or not, which, which I don't. I don't know him, uh, yeah. but I've followed this for quite some time. Yeah. So who knows? Mm. But uh, but there we are. That's uh, So Elon Musk is apparently after some time leaving Twitter. We don't know how long yet, obviously. Um, but the question, I suppose, then is who will be the next CEO? And we don't know that either. So well, if you not bring, terribly informative. If, if he brings me back, I, I'll put in an application. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. And I'll definitely pay the $8 too.
If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the Epoch series, the most recent one on William II. If you'd like to find out what else we're putting out, you can follow us on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.